would you like to be the presenter today? Um, no? Sure. <laughs> so tonight um, we're working on, um, we want to inform everybody about some election issues. So we've got the two city council candidates here. And then um, Liz and I are also going to talk about districts. There's a district uh, initiative, or districts measure on the ballot in November. We want to just inform you a little bit about that. And then not on the ballot is a um, <clears throat> proposed ordinance about a plastic bag ban. So Pam's been going to um, talk about what that is, and um, one of the reasons she's going around to the different neighborhoods is to collect feedback from the community. What are your thoughts on the plastic bag ban? Are you for it or are you against it? So um, this is a good opportunity to say it now so you don't have to like drive all the way up and attend a council meeting. Oh well, so, you could drive all the way up. You, you could do that. With me, you might as well go to the council meeting. <laughs> <laughs> you could do that, but anyway, this is a good opportunity to voice your opinion, yes. so. Great. And we are filming it. I and see that. Much to my amazement. We'll just be filming the presenters so that nobody has to worry about um, if their faces will get on because we like to put these on YouTube when we're done so that the rest of the people that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many viewers we're getting. No. Um, <laughs> so we will be doing that as well. But your voice will be on, but your faces will not. And with that, we have um, Pam Kepfer from 350.org. Uh, anyway. um, the Everett Reusable Bag Ordinance, that's a polite way to say plastic bag ban actually will be coming to Seattle to the City Council this month. They're planning on the first reading October 17th, the second reading October 24th, and they're planning on voting on the ordinance on the 31st. So this is a very rapid time frame. I just found out last week that that's where we were at. Anyway, so this is a, this is a joint effort between Zero Waste Washington, which is a state organization and is working with the other communities in Washington, and then a local organization, 350, which is your local climate action group. And I'm Pam Kepfer from Tech Group. Yes, this one. Yes. So what is a reusable bag ordinance? Well, it's a law that the city passes to regulate uh, plastic bags in the retail environment. Um, Zero Waste Washington has recommended statewide compatible language to the city of Everett so that we won't be an outlier in terms of the legal um, requirements of the law. And the council will begin considering the ordinance this month. What does the law do? Well, pretty much what all the rest of the laws do. It affects retail stores, not restaurants, not pharmacies, not you know other things, just strictly retail stores. It applies to that thin carry-out bag that you get at the checkout. It doesn't include produce bags, it doesn't include dry cleaner bags, it doesn't include your newspaper bag. You know, it's just those ones at the at the checkout. Um, after the ordinance goes into effect, the store may offer a recycled paper bag or a heavy reusable plastic bag at a charge of five cents. At, at the checkout, and you can bring your own bag and save that, that money. I mean, this isn't mandatory to buy a bag at the store. And people that are on uh, assistance, those kinds sometimes snap or have EBIT cards would be, um, would not be subjected to that fee. So it does take into effect that it could be a burden for some households. Over 22 Washington cities, and there's a list over here, I've got some handouts if you'd like to see more. Over 22 Washington cities and over 40 countries have some kind of plastic bag ban or tax in place. The first country that ever got rid of plastic bags was Pada, Bangladesh. In 2002, they banned all plastic in, in the country because in 1988 and 1989, they had huge floods. And it turns out that their sewer systems and their drainage systems were clogged with plastic. And so in 2002, Bangladesh was the first country to completely ban you know, reusable plastic from their country. So we're a little bit behind the developing world here. Isn't that interesting? I thought that was so interesting when I learned that. Anyway, Americans use about 100 billion, 100 billion plastic bags a year, which is about 12 million uh, barrels of oil, because plastic bags are made out of oil, or in Washington, they're made out of fracked gas. You know, so it's either natural gas or oil that is converted into plastic from plastic bags. And a plastic bag is in use for an average of 12 minutes. You know, from the time you load it up in the store and you take it home and you take your groceries out and you do whatever you do with it, it's about an average of 12 minutes. So they take million-year-old oil out of the ground, subject it to all this chemistry, and then we use it for 12 minutes and throw it away. And it takes 500 to 1,000 years for a plastic bag to degrade in the wild. You know, 
the, the molecules never go away. It just breaks down and gets smaller and smaller and smaller, but the plastic molecules stay in the environment forever. There's no way to send your plastic bag. Fewer than 3% of single-use plastic bags are recycled. You know, some people, I mean, I take mine back to the grocery store, right? And some people do, but most people don't. And even the grocery stores don't necessarily recycle the bags because there's only one company, country in the whole company, there's only one company in the whole country that uses recycled plastic bags, and they make tricks. You know, if you have, you've got a deck and it's got that, that, that fake plastic wood, well, there's a company in Idaho that takes um, grocery bags and recycles them along with waste uh, wood products, and they make that decking for your, for your deck. And right now, as far as I know, that's the only place where recycled bags actually are used. So there's a possibility that when you take your plastic bag back to the store to be recycled, they just take it out to the garbage, right? Because they can't be recycled. The plastic bags also find themselves in places they shouldn't be, like the ocean. And there's thousands of marine animal species that are affected and killed by plastic bags every year. So they're floating around out there. This is usually a longer presentation. I'm going faster than I would normally go. You're doing um, great. Thank you. I can understand every word. Well, that's good. <laughs> English is excellent. So recycling is unreliable. You, know, you return to the stores, and they may or may not send it on to the Trex people. Um, they're also damaging to the recycling machinery. Uh, I went last two weeks ago to a major recycling facility in Seattle, a 750,000 square foot recycling facility. It had 64 conveyor belts, and it was noisy. And they take Seattle's mixed recycling, and they send it through this process, and the bags get in the rollers, and the bags get in the gears, and the bags get in everywhere. Uh, Portland, sit in the Portland recycling facility, they spend 25% of their productive time down because they have to clean plastic bags out of the machinery. So that's, it's a huge impact on the industry. Or they get loose in the environment and turtles eat them. They look just like jellyfish, right? And, oh. and turtles naturally eat jellyfish. So plastic bags, you've seen the awful pictures. There's awful pictures all over about what plastic bags do. So how does a community benefit from having plastic bags um, reduced? Well, we'd have cleaner streets, cleaner parks, cleaner lakes, cleaner rivers, cleaner beaches, cleaner salt water here. Um, we can be proud of ourselves for joining the 40 countries in the world, including Bangladesh, who have some kind of ban on plastic bags, <coughs> including China. By the way, two years ago, China banned, banned plastic bags countrywide. Um, we can catch up with the rest of the world that way and save money, um, both on the waste removal, recycling plants, I mean, cleaning them up and finding them, clearing storm drains, all of those processes take money. Uh, it would reduce our carbon footprint because we are using 12 million barrels of oil in America for this. And we'd have a healthier planet and healthier oceans. So I'm all for it. You probably know this. Anyway, so the council wants to know, do the people of Everett want a reusable bag ordinance? So uh, you have a council member here, and I've seen other council members at other meetings. You can talk to them. Or you can email the council, council at everettlaw.gov. Um, and that email would go to uh, every council member and you're, you would be counted. You know, they're taking statistics off of emails. So I encourage you to email the council, uh, put something about, you know, support plastic bags, you know, don't support plastic bags in the, in the attention line so they know what you're, what you're coming about. And let the council know how you feel about plastic bags because that is one of their main concerns is how do the citizens feel about it. You can come to a meeting, 17th and the 24th, the uh, plastic bags will be under consideration there, the readings, and you can. there's public speaking time, you can come and speak, and on the 31st, the council's gonna vote. What you can do now? Now you can carry reusable bags and use them. I have several in my car. I even have little cotton bags that I use for um, produce. You know, in the produce section, I don't use those bags anymore. I have little cotton bags that I carry. There's not very many ways to get plastic out of your life. You know, you can't tell Amazon to not ship it. You know, you go to Costco and you can't unwrap it there in the, in the, in the packing area and leave your plastic behind. It's a little awkward that way. But this is one place where citizens really can make an impact on plastic. Anyway, uh, I have a petition. I'd like to circulate this through the crowd here. Anyway, uh, this would go directly to the council. If you want to email the council, we're going to send them um, petitions to make your voice heard in favor. If you're against, you have to write your own letter. 
<laughs> um, anyway, so I'm sorry this is really quick because I know you've got a lot of great things on the uh, on the program tonight. So thank you for inviting me to share this issue. There's some handouts over there also if you'd like a list of all the local um, cities and people that have uh, put the band in place. I've put some handouts over there for you. Any questions? With our time frame, is it going to be on our ballot in November? This is not a ballot issue. This okay. is an ordinance that we passed by the city council. Okay. And they will be considering it on the 17th and 24th, and they'll be voting on the 31st. Okay. So what percentage of these, you say it's a billion bags, or 100, 100 billion bags? 100 million, about. Okay. About. okay. People put their garbage in plastic mm -hmm. bags. Mm -hmm. The food comes in plastic. Uh, we, we joke we know it's trash day because the trash is blowing down the street mm -hmm. because it's not contained. People don't bag their garbage or mm -hmm. or when they Rubitino picks it up, it gets dispersed and then it gets loose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all that is so all we're doing is looking at a portion of that. Uh, yeah, the total, the total plastic load. Yeah. Right. But this is the one you can do something about. You know, you can't say, I don't want my bread in a plastic bag, thank you. Yeah. You know, anyway, and plastic bags are not recyclable. The best place to put them is in the garbage. So if you have garbage, mm -hmm. don't put a single plastic bag in there. Fill it up with other things, you know, mm -hmm. and put it in the garbage, and it'll go to a landfill, which is the ultimate best, well, Trex lumber is the best place for plastic bags, and we can't guarantee it would go there, you know, but ultimately the landfill is the ultimate champion of recycling. So is it... Are they looking at other alternatives to recycling? It's, it's one thing to say, let's not have these. Yeah. But around here, it rains. I know. And you know, they, uh, if you get a paper bag and you mm -hmm. put your groceries in it, you probably won't make it home before that bag collapses. Mm -hmm. um, the, re the, the reusable bags, mm -hmm. nice idea. A lot of people forget them. Yeah, so I know. I keep them on the front seat of my car. Yeah, and so they, they forget them. They get to the mm -hmm. store. They can, especially you say that people that are on assistance, assistance. get them for free. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that they're going to take care of them and bring them back and use them again. They're probably going to end up in the landfill or mm -hmm. whatever. People are just people. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's all so right. I don't think this is a cure-all to, to solving the problem. No, it's not. It's just <coughs> find, finding a better way of using that plastic yeah. uh, and, and reusing it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's up to chemists and, and mm -hmm. businesses and industries. You know, this is one thing that the only people can do on a human scale mm -hmm. to address mm -hmm. the issue of plastic. Mm -hmm. If I could, um, I had invited one of our youth here tonight. I was hoping she could give her perspective just to do the point counterpoint Absolutely. on this. So I've been using re I've been using reusable bags for probably over 15 years. So I definitely don't like the use of the plastic bags. But um, I worry about some of our neighbors. Um, I see a lot of people, they shop at Fred Meyer and they carry all their plastic bags back to their apartments. So I worry about the impacts on them and I was hoping some would be here tonight to share that. Um, you know, and I understand if they've got, you know, the um, aid, that they don't have to pay for the paper bags. But I worry about those paper bags, as you said, getting all the way back to their apartments. Um, they could take the heavier plastic bag. There's two choices at the checkout. They both cost a nickel. Okay. Yeah. So I worry about that. And then also, you should know that, um, and I've already shared my view with Pam on that, Kroger, who owns QFC and Fred Meyer, they've committed to eliminating plastic bags in their stores. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to start with QFC, and it isn't 2025 is their target, which is a ways away, but um, that is another alternative to let the market drive it versus I kind of worry about if the city implements it, there's going to be, because I, you know, when you go into next door that everybody really shares their real opinions, mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of people that are against it. So I worry about creating a rift between the city and the people on this issue. So just, I want to just share some other viewpoints for you to consider. <coughs> so, you know, we, we use, you know, we got our own bags. We do that all the time. Um, the one question I have, and maybe it's for our councilman back here, is that, you know, I, I routinely go to our transfer stations to recycle. Mm -hmm. There is no plastic recycling whatsoever in them. And why is that? Because there's no way to handle them. Well, again, we just talked about Trek recycles mm -hmm. plastic bags. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have a source who will use the bags. Mm -hmm. How come we're not engaging them already? 
and saying we could be a supplier for you. Yeah. So Fred Meyer and I believe Target, they you can take your bags there. You can take your like the plastic wrap from toilet paper and um, um, I think a they call plastic it thin, from, they call it thin plastic. Yeah. Oh, thin but but plastic once again, so, there's there's yeah. a, a a person who will consume these, and you know we're saying hey we're going to ban them, which is great, fine to do that. But there's a lot of other plastic out there. Just like you were talking about, there's, this, this is not a cure-all. This is there's a lot of plastic out there. Why aren't we engaging a person who will use that plastic and start collecting it and giving it to them? Because that's where you're going to really start getting stuff off the street. You really want me to answer that? Sure. Money. Uh, I'm sure it's yeah. money, but it's easier to start with clean verge. What they call virgin. Well, no, I mean I'm saying it's tra We have a we have a company out there who will take it. Yeah. Why aren't we engaging them and saying, well, how can we the, the get in your The grocery stores pipeline? are engaging him. When you take your plastic bag back to the grocery store, they're in, which is a reasonable place to take your plastic bag, they're engaging with Trex. But Trex can't take the 100 billion bags that Americans make. Oh, I, I understand year. that, but I'm saying as Everett, as the city of Everett, mm -hmm. we, you know, why so, don't we engage as the city of Everett? Don't know. So we've got uh, Paul Roberts and Ethel McNeil from the city council. So they will be the ones addressing this issue at council. Um, we are actually out of time. Ethel, yeah. did you have a really quick point to make? I was just going to make a statement like that. Um, to everything, there was a season. And, you know, we changed from place to place. If you go back some years ago, we had paper bags, and people thought paper bags were bad. They were the worst things in the world, the worst things for the environment. We've got to get rid of those paper bags. We've got to get plastic in here. <laughs> so now we've got plastic in here. So now this is the worst thing in the world. We've got to get rid of that, those plastic bags. We're not consistent with anything. We keep changing with everything that happens, and I think everybody's doing what they can. And like you said, Kroger, in the South, they've already begun. They've removed the plastic bags, and they've got the paper bags in and things like that. And I think a lot of people, and a lot of stores like Kroger down South, they're offering uh, free of uh, reusable bags with, with some of your orders and stuff like that. And I think a lot of us are, are going to that. But eventually, you know, you, you got to figure when those bags break down, what happens to those and how do we dispose of those and we'll be faced with the same thing. So we just never know what's going to happen. But I think everybody's doing the best that they can to, to try to remedy the solution and stuff like that. And like you said, the stores are taking the plastic bags. Like Walmart, all of these stores around in Fairmire, they're all taken. If you will take them, they have density to put them in and recycle them.